Okay, now we're going to do the binding for my recycled uh, smash book. We've already got the cover done and we've gotten all of the pages prepared to go into the book. We've got them already sectioned out into signatures. In this book, there are six all together. So what you need to do is you need to decide how you want to do your binding. So with this binding, I wanted to have, whoops, I wanted to have some beads. Oh, focus. I'm not used to how this, there we go. Uh, beads dangling one from the side. So when I did my binding um, on the outside, I needed to make sure that there was um, strings hanging out from the side here to add my beads. On this one, which is my smash a year, the binding, it's on the outside also, but um, there's nothing hanging off the side bead wise. So the binding ended up getting tied on the envelope inside here. So when it's closed up, you can't you can't see it. So it ends up here. So for this one, we're gonna do it on the outside. So I got a five hole binding, um, which is pretty simple. It's a, I guess it's not really the Coptic stitch. I don't know. I'm sure it has a name. I just don't know what that is. And I make a lot of books. So usually what I do is I. Um, make myself a template which is the same height as my pages which is eight inches tall and then I measure uh, with my ruler I usually measure the center an inch from each end and then the center of that so this one's, uh, happens to be three inches inch and a half center inch and a half three inches and so like I said since I make a bunch of books my husband made me this thing, this tool. It's a, a jib, I guess. And he's, it's two pieces of metal that he put, got holes in. So when I put my signature in there and punch through, it keeps it nice and even and sturdy and it's faster. So um, it's faster for me since I make a ton of books. I got a ton of templates. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my template inside there. And I'm going to take my Tim Holtz uh, pokey tool. <laughs> And I'm going to put it, I'm going to lay it in that crease, and then I'm going to poke my holes. Now, this particular jib, I can't go all the way through on a couple of the holes, so I just push it through, like so. And of course, if you don't have a really cool jib that your husband made you, like I did, you can do the same thing. And take your template or you know if you don't want a template you can also just simply mark it you know at three inches inch and a half zero inch and a half three inches but I'm gonna use my template since I got it here so you can just line it up poke your hose And it goes through all, since we've got it paper clipped together, everything stays exactly what's supposed to, and it goes through all the layers. So now you have your holes lined up there. Okay, so with this book, I used um, crochet thread. And then with this one, I used Canvas Corp um, Juke Cord. I just thought it was, it looked pretty with the purple and everything. I don't know, I just liked it. Alrighty. Then we're going to need a needle. And I'm just going to use um, just a small needle that's got a little bit large. You don't even have to, with the jute, you need a larger uh, eye hole there to get it through. But... I'm just going to use this needle and what I'm going to do is I'm not going to cut a piece off. I'm just going to leave it attached. That way I've got enough. And so I'm going to thread it. Okay. 
So here's how this binding goes. It's, it's a little bit complicated. Oh, you know what? I forgot. I need to mark my, my cover. Since I've already got the beads on there, it's going to make it a little... So you do the same thing. You find the center. And this is a little bit bigger because the pages are 8 inches and this is 8 and a quarter. So you still you want to find your center. You want to mark it at 3 inches. One and a half, one and a half, and three in the center. And you want to, you know, try to figure out the nice space in your in your spine. Um, and I marked it, so so I can just go back with my pokey and a pencil. So I can just go with my pokey tool, just push through. It's not really that hard to do. Gotta give it a little bit of oomph. Get your fingers back there, but you want to support it a little bit. Okay, so now I've got all my holes in my cover. Uh, can you see that? So when you when you line up your your page, make sure you got it the right side up. You just want to make sure they correspond correctly to the to the spine. All right. So with this binding method, because I want to have the beads dangling from the outside, I'm going to start from the outside, like so. And then I'm going to take it through the outside of my signature. I can do this. It's kind of awkward. There we go. Take it up through there. Then I'm kind of going to go in a figure eight. So I'm going to go down inside the signature through the spine. Same color, pull it tight. Come back up through the middle. And you're going to have to probably, oops, see, I almost went through the wrong hole. Up through the middle of the spine and then through the middle of your signature. And you want to kind of pull it tight. Not too tight. You don't want to like rip it. And then go down the next hole. Pull it tight and then come down the, to the final hole. Make sure you go through and pull it tight. All right, now you go back to that hole, the second hole from the bottom. I'm going to go back through there and through the spine. Sometimes this um, crochet thread likes to get a little tangled through the middle. Of your spine. And you'll see how it's getting kind of, you just want to go back and pull it tight. Spine and your signature. And you want to go back down the second from the top hole. Oops, sorry. Pull it tight, pull that tight. Then you want to go back, um, whoops. You want to go back up this last hole, or the top hole, I should say. This, this might be a little tricky. So I don't advise uh, adding the beads until you're done. So you're done with the sewing part because it makes it a little... Alright, so you see I come back up that hole. You might see I've got my beads all tangled up in my... Come on. came back up, you want to give it a little bit of a snug pull, then I'm going to kind of tie, I'm going to go under this right here and I'm going to tie a knot, and I'm going to be pulling on both, I'll keep my hand out of the way, and this one, you, know, you don't want to pull too hard because you don't want to break your thread right now, and I want to make another one, 
this is just to make sure that it's good and snug. Right, and then you want to go back out that same hole. That should be easier that time. Alright, so then you flip it over. You can take that needle off. Pull it a little snug, and then you just want to do like a, a double knot. Actually, I do like three or four times. So that's what you end up with. I don't know if you can see it, but there's like a. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut off and leave a good, generous tail because you, know, you want to be able to um, add your beads. All right. So that's like you can go ahead and remove those uh, paper clips from that one. So we got one more to go. Which is this one? They're pretty. I thought that would be a good um, first page. Okay. So you want to thread your needle again? Start on the outside. want to pull this way you'll snap your thread. If you pull this way not too hard and it works best. Then you want to go back out. Flip it over. Now we've got all of our signatures sewn in. Leave those. So there's the first pocket. There's the plastic photo sleeve. Fold out, plain. Okay, now we're gonna remove these. Now we're gonna glue our envelope. So open it back up. First thing I like to do, just it also adds extra security, is just to kind of run a bead of glue down the bottom where the um, thread is. Then you want to run a really fine bead of glue along the edge where it's going to close. You don't want too much because you don't want it to seep. And then you close it and you hold it for a minute. Let's see that glue. Coming. And you can also, too, if you don't want to sit here and hold it and you want to, like, go on to the next one, put paper clips and it'll hold it just fine. And you see how the binding is in there now? And this, I'm also using Scotch Quick Dry Liquid Adhesive. It does dry really quick. Alright, let's go to the next one. And you just let that dry, and it dries pretty fast. 
So there, they're all sewn in. Ta da! Alright, the next part is the beads. But before we do that, the bead part, is I want to show you a little trick. Um, this is probably not a traditional way of doing things, but I don't particularly want to find beads that will slide onto a needle. So what I do instead is I put a tiny bit of glue on there and I just kind of roll it, you know, maybe about an inch. I do that to every end because... Oops, that's a little, that's not a tiny, that's a little too much. Because it makes it hard, and it's like a needle. It can go through, depending on your bead, of course, it can go through just about anything. A little sticky. Alright. And the beads that I've chosen... I've chosen a bunch. Like this is a pack of beads that I thought went really well with the collection. I think I got it at Joanne's. It's kind of a Celestine or Calistine or something coral. But these are the ones that I didn't use. So these are like the left but it comes in like this little pillow box. These are the beads that I used. What I'm going to do is I'm going to mimic my first set of beads over here into this last set just because I think it'll be it'll look good proportionately and you don't you don't have to do that but that's that's what I want to do so I've already split them out so I know what I'm going to do so then this is what I, I started with all these different beads that I thought would look really really nice these are actually real gemstone beads I think they're um um oh shoot Okay, it's not jade, but it's, or it could be jade. I'll have to look. But anyway, these are like really, really nice beads that I thought went great. And these are some glass crystal, just clear. They're very faceted. These are plastic uh, clear. Um, these are recycled. They came off the necklaces. And this came off a really, really flashy necklace, but I love the teardrop. And then these were also off of that necklace. These were bought, and I believe these were bought too. I think I bought a strand of these. I just thought they were pretty. But they went really well with this collection. So, I don't throw this aside because I've already picked out my beads. So, I know this is probably going to be hard to see. But my first strand is on the outside here. So, I'm going to take this one. I'm going to make sure I didn't, uh, I might have tied, the, I did. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tie these two sets of strings together for the signatures. It doesn't have to be super tight, it's just kind of to make it, I don't know, it just looks nicer in my opinion. And I'll do like two, three, three night knots. <laughs> Alright. So I'm going to take this outside one, and it's going to be the shortest set. And I believe I started with... I know this is not a professional bead binding method, so don't cringe for all you propose out there. And then, then you, this, y'all tell you that little bead is, and then... Oh, is it not dry yet? Oh, I see. There's something in the way. So I'll take my little pokey tool and see if I... Well. Alright, see? Just be threads right on. I don't know if you can see it or not. Alright, my next one is this yellow round teardrop thing. You see how nicely it just goes in there with that glue? Alright, and then my next one is this jade bead, which is so pretty. If I get my fingers out of the way, I got glue, everything all over my fingers. Alright, that's that one. See? So far, so good. And then this next one is this pretty pink bead that came out of 
the, the pillow box of beads. And then a glass bead. These are, I mean, you can tell they're glass, they're cold feeling and they're heavy. All right, and the way I'm going to close this off, this is probably not a traditional correct way either, but I'm going to make sure this is a closed um, jump ring. I'm not real handy with these tools, but let me try. It looks like this jump ring was twisted out of the proportion here. I should do it this way. I'm definitely not a jewelry maker. I'm not good with these tools. I think I'm trying to squeeze it. Well, I squeezed it too much. I might have to get another one. Yeah, I think I'm going to get another one. That's okay. There's my bag. Yeah. I'll just get another one. Oh, look, this one looks good. Okay. You can also put like a dab of glue. I don't know. I'm not a, like I said, I'm not a jewelry maker. Alright, so how I closed this first one off was, let me double check, but I'm pretty sure, I think I know how. Okay. I just thread it through that, like so. Then I went back through my glass bead. Hopefully there's enough room. Yep. Okay, and my, my thing shut off. I don't know where we stopped, so I'm working on the first strand of beads here, and I'm trying to, to close it off, tie it off. So I'm trying to go back through this glass bead if I can. Of course, it's not going to cooperate on camera. Come on. It's like getting stuck right there. It shouldn't. Trying to pull it down a little bit. I think what I need to do is add some more glue. Make it stiffer. If that makes sense. Let it dry. Okay, let's give this a whirl. <laughs> My fingers are sticky. I didn't have near as much trouble. There we go. Now you want to try to get your beads up higher. You don't want to pull the wrong one. Make sure you got the right one. Like so. I don't want it that super tight, so then pull it up. And now I'm just going to knot it in between the glass bead and that pink bead. I'm going to knot it a couple times. Like I said, I am not a jewelry maker. This is just how I do it. It's a handmade 
smash book, scrapbook, whatever. And I'll put a tiny dot of glue. That's probably not necessary, but I do it anyway. Try not to cut the knot when you put the string off. And try to flatten that out without getting glue all over the place. Voila! There's your first strand. It's just like the first one over here. Okay, so that's the first one. <clears throat> then the second one. The second one is done. Okay. Now for the third one. I am pretty sure that I don't need one of these strings. I just need one more. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a dab of glue right here. Just to kind of. And I'm going to cut one of these off. Actually, I'm going to put a dab of glue down a little bit further. And I'm going to cut one off. Right about so. Alright. The way I'm going to do this one is this is one of these beads that also came. In there. And we'll thread it through. Voila! <laughs> and then I'm going to thread this through. And then I'm going to come back up this way, thread through that bead again. Come on, let it through. There. Okay. I'm going to try to get it on there pretty close. And I'm going to try to knot it. It's going to be hard because I've already got, <laughs> I've got sticky fingers and i got other stuff in the way. One more time. I don't put that seam binding on there until after this part is over. Alright, so now I'm going to glue it. It doesn't look really pretty right now, but that's okay. And cut off the extra. Like so. Alright, so there's a whole beads. It might be a bit much, but I just love me some beads. Okay, so the last step is I use um, just regular old seam binding, white, uh, hug snug seam binding. It's just white. And I dye it, like with this particular case, I used Tim Holtz Victorian Velvet for the pink. I just um, kind of get the ribbon wet and, and add the... the um, the distress ink and just kind of squish it and scrunch it and 
Um, this one's antique linen, uh, Tim Holtz antique linen. And then I use these, uh, I reuse the jewelry pieces, the, the backing that they come on, and make a little ribbon thingy. So what I did was I did pink, um, antique linen, Victorian velvet, antique linen, and now I'm going to do Victorian velvet again. So I tied it on each side. I don't know if you can see that or not, but I kind of, where I pulled the two together in the beginning there, it's going to be kind of hard to see because of the angle. I'll show you in just a second. I'm going to have to be able to, I'm sure there's an easier way to do this too. Maybe I'll use my... So can you see where I just pulled it, pulled it up through there? So then I'm gonna tie it in a double knot. Okay, and there we go. There's all my pretty beads. On my landing. I like it, I like it. Okay. My closure, I just did a simple, I did a, um, an eyelet here in the center and I, I fed a chain through it. And then I distressed one of those Tim Holtz, um, I didn't distress it, um, I gessoed it and then I used archival ink to add a little bit of distressing and then I sealed it with the multi matte medium just to keep it from kind of um, chipping off or whatever and then I attached it to this chain and it just clips right there right in the middle so it gives you time it gives you you know space to to breathe so you can add stuff and you can change you know the length of it or whatever all right so there we have it I like to leave the covers plain so whoever gets this they can add whatever they want on the cover. I don't like to like tell you what you should have on the cover. So let's go ahead and take these off because they're good and dry. Now you have a nice little envelope. Same with this one. Nice little envelope. And you have six signatures with that really, really, really pretty um, Ladies Diary paper. So we're gonna have, I'm gonna have all of these I'm going to have this one uh, on my shop at Genevieve Designs uh, at Etsy.com with all these pretty beads. And then I'm going to finish this one up. That remember that we started, I showed you how to make the cover with the recycled cereal box. I'm going to finish this one up in a similar fashion to this. And I'm going to have that one on my Etsy shop. And this one, this is my, my 12, my smash a year. Um, it's a little, you know, it's a little bit different. Uh, the binding's different. And all I did was take that same seam binding and used, um, and kind of wove it underneath there. And then tied a knot and then added, this is um, Marion Smith. She has a, I don't think you can get them anymore, but they were by Prima. And it was, it's called Vintage Trinkets. And, you know, it had the clasp and it had this dangly thing. And there's the clasp and then it had this tassel so that's kind of my simple closure for this one so I'm gonna have this one on my Etsy shop it's very large I mean what is this this is I would say about three inches this is a three inch um, spine so um, I'm gonna have this one and I'm gonna have this one this beautiful beaded baby and then I'm gonna finish this one up and have this one on my shop too so uh, I hope you enjoyed watching it, and I hope it wasn't too crazy for my first set of, um, my first tutorial, and I just kind of wanted you to see what all goes into um, some of the books and journals and stuff that I make, um, and maybe try one on your own. If you have any questions or comments, um, feel free to leave that. Um, I'll try to, uh, I'm not sure how it works, I'm going to try to put a link um, to my shop. Um, at Genevieve Designs Etsy.com 
And um, thank you. I appreciate you watching. Bye.